the Associated Press, in an attempt to defend anything and anyone who doesn't like Trump, has an entire piece out today about how Antifa isn't really a thing. Many of the people being arrested, they're not formally associated with Antifa. Mostly they're just misguided suburban youths. They're misguided, you know, just, just like normal white kids who, who went wrong for a second and blinded a police officer with a, with a laser or something. Joining us on the line to discuss is Gabriel Nadal. He's the Leadership Institute's student's rights advocate. He's also the author of Behind the Black Mask, My Time as an Antifa Activist. Gabriel, thanks for joining the show. Thanks for having me on. So let's talk about Antifa. So Joe Biden recently said in a presidential debate that they are more of a philosophy, maybe an ideology, but certainly not an organization. You worked as part of Antifa. You were an Antifa activist. How exactly does the organization work? So actually, the best way to understand Antifa is not as an organization or as an idea, like good old Joe Biden likes to say. The best way to understand Antifa is to see it as a movement. Within this movement, there are several different radical left-wing organizations. Some of them use the name of Antifa, like Rose City Antifa, but many do not. Some of them include the Youth Liberation Front, the Redneck Revolt, and specifically in San Francisco, we just saw the 161 crew, an Antifa-affiliated group, beat up a, a, a Trump conservative voter, basically knocking out his teeth. But in the end of the day, the same way that Antifa activists cover their face with a black mask, well, these groups use the banner of Antifa to hide their true identity. Okay, so what exactly is the ideology behind Antifa? Because we have seen really no exposition of what it is. The media just lie, and, and you see people like Chris Cuomo suggesting that Antifa is basically what soldiers of World War II were. They were storming the beaches of Normandy, no. apparently burning cop cars and trying to blind officers and such. Um, but well, no. what exactly is the ideology behind Antifa? So and to be part of Antifa, you actually have to do two things, which means to adopt an anti-fascist mentality is the first thing. Well, a lot of people would say, yeah, like Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, but to this radical leftist group, Fascism is capitalism in American society. This is why you always see them trying to burn down Bibles, as, as we saw in Portland, or try to burn down Amazon centers' targets, because they're here to destroy American culture. And I mean, this really goes to the heart of the anti-fascist uh, uh, mentality. As a matter of fact, Mark Bray, who wrote the book Antifa, the anti-fascist handbook, he writes that at the heart of the anti-fascist outlook is a rejection of the classical liberal phrase that I may disagree with you, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Antifa rejects basic American values like free speech, capitalism, and the free market enterprise because they're radical leftist Marxists. So when you look at the way the media have portrayed Antifa, what do you think justifies that? Because it's not as though this information isn't out there to, to be gotten. I mean, as you mentioned, there are entire handbooks for Antifa. You can just see the slogans that they're spray painting. You can, you can see what they're doing, breaking into private businesses. This is not an anti-fascist movement. Why are the media so willing to, to gloss over it? Why won't Joe Biden condemn Antifa? Well, it's actually really interesting to see the way the narrative has been changing over the last couple of months. Because if you remember when President Trump was first elected, Antifa became really a big known thing and everybody was praising it. CNN's Kamel Bell went on, on uh, he made a segment, I forget what it was called, but uh, he interviewed a current member of Antifa and she pulled out brass knuckles and knives and then they both started laughing. Later in that segment, he interviewed some members of the Redneck Revolt and called them the good guys. And then one of those same members bombed an ICE facility in Washington. But it's interesting because as soon as the American people started to see what Antifa was truly about, which is the destruction of countless American cities, the narrative has changed to Antifa? That doesn't even exist. Then that's because they're trying to make sure that Joe Biden gets elected because Antifa is a true problem for Joe Biden because President Trump is the only person capable of really dealing with this threat. So let's talk about what operations actually look like within Antifa. You say it's a movement. How much of the violence is actually organized and how much of it is spontaneous? We've seen videos during these Antifa riots of bands pulling up with, with shields and, uh, and bricks and, and, you know, and bats uh, being handed out to activists. We've seen what look like fairly organized movements, people moving through the streets uh, to areas where the cops are not. How well organized are these activities? So it really varies from group to group because, again, some of them are very affiliated with one another, such as the Torch Network, which they actually have an annual conference since 2013. So those are really, really well organized. But uh, again, going back to Mark Bray's book, in the back of the book, he quotes this Antifa activist named Murray. And he says, the reason you fight them with letters and, uh, is so you don't have to fight them with fists. The reason you fight them with fists is so you don't have to fight them with knives. The reason you fight them with knives, so you don't have to fight with guns, and with guns, so you don't have to fight with tanks. 
With this in mind, you can actually break Antifa activism into different stages, which means that if a, a small little violence does not you know, get their message across, they're willing to escalate that behavior. Not everybody in Antifa actually commits uh, violence against one another. I can tell you that I never did. But when you're wearing the black mask, and that you're aware a part of the black bloc, which is when everybody is dressed in black, you are committed to doing it if it comes if it comes your way. When Gabriel Nadal is the author is behind and the book is behind the black mask. My time is an Antifa activist. Go check it out today. Gabriel, really appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Thanks so much for watching. To see our latest video, click here. And to make sure you don't miss any future videos, be sure to subscribe. And since you're still here, give this video a thumbs up.